Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing a 15 minute game against Matt Check. Let's go D4, D5. And Matt Check is from Singapore. I didn't recognize that flag at first. I'll have to decide what I want to do against C4. I think I'll, I'll keep it in Slav territory. I'll play C6. This is one of my go to openings is black against D4. Plays Knight C3. So I could take on c4. That's a very challenging line. I'll just play knight f6. Main line. I'm going to check this guy's stats. I have a little bit more time to do that when I'm playing a 15-minute game. So, okay. He's won 68 games and lost 54 in the 15-minute pool. Looks like primarily a, a player who likes the long games. Yeah, his ratings in other categories are, are not that high. <clears throat> All right, so he plays knight f3. I'll play e6, so we've got a semi-slav on our hands. Bishop g5 is definitely the most challenging move here. He plays g3. Okay, this is a move that I've faced in some other games on uh, video that I've recorded. So I'm going to take the pawn on c4. And if he goes bishop g2, I'll play knight bd7. I think this is the best way to treat this scenario. There was a game recently at the Qatar Masters between um, Vladimir Kramnik as white and Anish Giri as black, where Giri tried to dispense with knight bd7, but Kramnik played a quick knight e5, which I think is a very desirable move for white because, uh, let's say on the previous move, instead of knight bd7, I had played b5, then knight e5 would hit c6 and also open up the bishop uh, and put some pressure on c4 as well. So I prefer playing knight bd7. I think that's a, a better way to go about this position. But I'm sure Geary knows a thing or two that I don't. So <laughs> and I say that in full serious, no, seriousness, no sarcasm. I'm sure there's some reason he was uh, preferring to dispense with knight bd7. Okay, so Matchek is trying to undermine my b-pawn. I'm just going to push because... Defending the b-pawn in this case with a6 is not a good idea because he could capture and if I take with my c-pawn I'm very much exposing my rook on a8 to his bishop on g2 and If a6 a takes b5 I cannot capture with the a-pawn because of uh, the pin on the a file So my options are pretty limited. I mean, I think I should advance so I will And I'll inconvenience his knight We'll see where he puts the knight Doesn't have too many options, either b1 or a2. Those are the safe squares. I bet he'll play knight a2. And then, hmm, against either knight a2 or knight b1, I'm kind of inclined to develop my bishop to a6. The reason for that is he's probably going to be playing like knight bd2 and queen c2 pretty quickly with pressure on my c-pawn. And I think, given the turn of events here, him playing a4 last move, I can make it pretty difficult for him to recover that c-pawn, which he definitely wants to do. I mean, if I were playing purely to equalize here, I'd probably play bishop b7 and then c5. But now I'm going to make it tougher on him, and I'm going to try to play this move. If he goes knight bd2 or queen c2, I'll go rook c8 next, with the idea of pushing c5 immediately thereafter. And if he takes at that point, I think I'll be liking my position. So I'm anticipating something like, you know, let's say knight bd2, Rook c8, queen c2, c5, and with my rook on the c-file x-raying his queen on c2, it'll be very dangerous for him to take the pawn on c4. I don't think he'll be thrilled to do that. He still might be able to, because he could play pawn b3 to support it. So, that's my immediate plan. Hmm. Hope everybody's having a good weekend so far. So this video is coming out on Saturday. Tata Steele is drawing to a close. Carlson's still in the lead by a half point in the top group. Uh, I think Wesley So is a half point behind him. All right, Ricky won. So he's preparing E4. It's the likely reasoning behind that move. I could just develop Bishop E7. 
Rook c8 again makes sense. Let's go rook c8. I'm just going to play quickly because I think my moves are pretty natural here. And if he goes e4, I'll play bishop e7. I don't want to commit my bishop to d6 because when he plays e4, he'll be threatening e5. And with a bishop on d6, that would just be a recipe for disaster with him forking the two minor pieces there, the knight on f6 and the bishop. So this seems normal. Now he has to figure out how to develop his queenside pieces. He hasn't moved those. I mean, he did move the knight, but it went right back to b1. I'm still looking to play c5, although I think I'll probably wait until after I've castled to play that move. The reason for that is if I play c5 too soon, he might go d5. And a subsequent exchange on d5, he'll be threatening d6, and I don't want my king being x-rayed by his rook. Okay, so it might be a little bit different now, because if I play c5 now and he goes d5, I can take twice, perhaps. Yeah, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play this move now, because when he played knight bd2, it blocked his queen, so his queen can't communicate with uh, a pawn that he might potentially have on d5. Okay, and he does play that move. Well, for sure, I'm gonna take once at least. Yeah, let's take. Here, and then after he takes back, I'll decide. I don't think e5 is very good for him, so I doubt he plays it. If he plays e5, he's giving me a huge central pawn mass, queenside pawn mass too. He does play it. Okay, so it is forcing my knight to an awkward square. However, uh, being up two pawns this early in the game, I think is definitely worth it that inconvenience. Knight g4, he might play e6. Hmm. Knight g4, my knight is kind of floating out there, undefended. Knight g8, uh, hate to have to play that move. It seems safe, but just looks ugly. Knight e4 would be a very normal continuation too. Knight e4 gives back a pawn. So he could take twice on e4, but frees up my position pretty significantly. I sort of feel like um, against this opponent, I might be more inclined to play a greedy move like knight g4, knight g8. Whereas against someone who um, I would expect to be pressuring me as white, when they have the white pieces, I might play a more equalizing move like knight e4, or not equalizing because I think black's equalized already, but a simplifying move, let's say. It's kind of a tough call. I mean, it's also possible to even just like castle and give up the knight as I get another pawn. I have three pawns at that point. It seems extreme though. Given how good my position is, I don't think I'll be doing that. Knight g4 just kind of feels like the right move. But then again, I'm not, not sure about e6. If something like uh, knight g4, e6, pawn takes e6, knight g5. I'm just worried my lack of development could give him some compensation. Hmm. This is a reasonably tough decision. I'm just going to play knight e4 for the sake of convenience. I'm going to give him one pawn, but I'll have no development issues. I'll be able to castle. I think it's a fair bargain to shed one of my extra pawns. He could move his, um, his knight and try to recapture with the knight on e4, but he doesn't. Let's just castle now. He might play e6, but I don't know that I'm too concerned about it. Okay, let's just castle. Yeah, if e6, I think I'll just play knight f6. 
Looks okay. Time-wise, about even. Not too much doing in that department. Hmm. I'll be curious to see what the engine thinks was best on that previous move on move 14, where to move the knight. If I were him, I would be seriously thinking about e6 because this pawn could just block his play. He may not want this e5 pawn to stick around too long. He wants his rook to have more influence on the file. He might want his knight to have increased scope. So it makes sense for him to look at pushing the pawn. He's having a decently long think here. By the way, if you have any additional feedback on uh, the format of the videos, please let me know. I've got some good initial feedback on uh, the current format of doing one bullet, one blitz, and one standard game each day. So I'll be doing that schedule for a little bit and see how it goes. Okay, here, I noticed that I might have the move knight takes e5. So he's trying to attack my knight on d7 a couple times. I could play rook c7, a safe move, but knight takes e5 might work. Simply because his queen is hanging, and if he takes my queen, I can take on f3 with check. So, yeah, actually, I think this is just a really good move. I don't see a refutation, per se, so I'll do it. Yeah, undefended piece on d1, a piece that is weakened now on f3 because he moved his bishop there. This looks good. He should probably move his queen, like queen e2, let's say. But I saw that at the very least I could trade knights on f3 and then play bishop b7. And I'll be skewering his rook to his queen. Even though I might lose my rook on c8, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'll still be going up material. Safe to say he didn't see this tactical shot. Knight takes e5. And he trades, okay. So now I play this in-between move. Check. Mm-hmm. Now which way to recapture? On d8. Taking with, like, the c rook looks natural because that rids me of um, the bishop takes c8 threat. However, he could take on e7 then, and my knight would be hanging, and the pawn on a7 is hanging. So I don't particularly like that, even though I think even there, black's doing pretty well. I'm kind of leaning towards bishop takes. Yeah, because if bishop takes, if ever he takes on f3, I have bishop b7 skewering. And if he takes on c8, I take on c8 back. And let's say then he takes on f3, I'll have bishop b7 once more. So let's do this. I think that's fine. I see absolutely nothing wrong with this move. He takes on c8, yep, as expected. He can move his rook away, but then I get to save my knight. And bishop b7 is a monster threat. It's just a huge, huge threat. And I'm able to do it now. So now the threat is at f5. f5 or rook e8. So I think he has to move his king. Yep. Then I can take on e4. He will doubtlessly take back. 
Now, I can check and bring my rook down to e1. However, his king gets active then, like rook e8 check, king d5, hitting c4. I think bishop f6 makes more sense here. Yeah, bishop f6 would be a more normal way of playing this, I think. Then I'm attacking b2, so it ties down his bishop. And if he goes king d5, I can play c3. This is my main reasoning behind this move. He should play king d5 because he has almost no play if he doesn't. I wonder if king d5 I can check on d8 and bring the rook into d1. It's not really worth the risk. Let's just do that. I'll pre-move this guy. This recapture. So now if he plays rook b1, then I might reconsider and play rook d8 check, rook d1 to pin him. Yeah, now it's more tempting to do this. Simply because I don't know if I want to waste time defending my c-pawn, and I'd love to activate my rook. So if I go check, he takes on c5, rook d1. I'll be threatening bishop d2. That's a sizable threat. He can't really get out of that either. So, you know, check. let's do that. It's a simple way to play. Even if, worst case, he finds some miracle defense, um, I'm still up a pawn much better position. I can't complain about anything. <laughs> A5, okay. Yeah, bishop d2 should be decisive. Bishop d2, I guess maybe he's planning on taking it. And then when I take on b1, he takes on b4 with his bishop. That also should be decisive for me. Might be a little annoying to win. About just b3. Mm. Let's make a luft move first. Let's go like h5. How about that? I have time here. Um, I don't have to play bishop d2 right away. So let's let's make a useful move. reason I'm thinking that might be good is maybe I can go pawn to b3 instead. And threaten to play uh, pawn to b2. And that comes in handy because if pawn b3 he takes with a rook, I can take on c1 without fearing a back right checkmate, rook b8. So yeah, b3 looks like a good idea now. Just simple threat of b2. Although in fairness, b2, like, he can play again bishop takes. Or, yeah, probably bishop takes. But in a lot of cases, h5 is a useful move, too. Okay. So now would be the time to um, play b2. So if I go b2, he takes with, let's say, the bishop. I take his rook. He takes my bishop on c3. If he takes with his bishop on c3, then I have rook b6, and I'll pick up his pawn. Yeah, that's that's winning. But so is bishop d2. Bishop d2 is winning as well. Both moves are good. Yeah, both moves are perfectly fine. Okay, we'll just choose one. He's having to shed material in either case. I, I just chose this one so that if he takes my bishop, I take on b1, I don't lose the b-pawn. That's the only reason I chose that. Otherwise, he's got to give me his bishop for free.
No way for a playable position for him or a drawable position. I think he should have tried way back on move 17. He maybe should have tried e6. I get the impression. Or a developing move like bishop f4 or something. Okay, so he's going to opt for this route. I'll take here. My b-pawn is dangerous too. So against that, I was just thinking about going here. Threatening the a6 pawn, threatening b2. Not much to be done. Best he can do is take my b pawn and you know, I win a6. It's over. Too much material. Just bring up our king. Many, many different ways to win here. I'm probably just going to infiltrate with my king, like go oh, king f5. Um, King e4, king at a three perhaps. Uh, I'll just go back with my rook. King b5, I'll bring my rook back to a2. Because eventually I think I can just take on f2 basically <laughs> is what I'm going to do. Hitting his bishop. If he takes, that's immediately losing endgame. So I suspect he'll take my pawn on a7. I'll just take here. This is what's nice about being up material. You can bully your opponents. Like even though, yeah, he could win a, a bishop for a rook right now, he would be in a completely lost pawn endgame if he does that. So he knows he doesn't Check. have a lot of options. Yeah, this is kind of unnecessary here. Yeah, I could have taken his bishop too if I wanted, just to really simplify the position. In fact, I think I'll do that. Check. Why not? <laughs> no point in really trying to... Trying to think too hard when you're totally winning. <laughs> Looks like he's going to make Check. me play to the bitter end. Make sure I don't stalemate him or something. I won't Check. go get another queen. I'll just play the position as is. Check. Okay, let's go here. Check. Let's cut off his king. Bring our king in. And let's checkmate next move. Checkmate. Okay, so I'm up to 2027 20, after this game in standard. Let's have a quick look. So he played this gambit continuation with g3, which is definitely playable for white. And I was kind of explaining what I think is the difference between um, 
playing like an immediate b5 or playing knight bd7. And I think knight bd7 is best if black can play this move. It's really nice just to rule out knight e5. So now b5. And a4 was uh, a little bit strange this early. I more often see people just play straight forward in the center with e4. So a4 just encourages me to do this. And I was saying how a6 is not a smart decision for black because white can take and I'm unable to take with my A pawn due to the pin, and taking with the C pawn exposes me on the diagonal. So when you don't have that option, that reinforcing option, usually you're looking at just pushing the pawn past, which is what I did. And then bishop A6. This plan was a little slow for him. If he's going to try to get play uh, with this whole knight B1, knight BD2 thing, I think he had to maybe uh, do away with rook e1 and e4 and instead play knight bd2, queen c2, and try to take on c4 ASAP. So here, you know, he pushed d5. I was expecting him to take back, but he pushed e5 instead. Now, I'm just curious which one the engine thinks is best here. Oh, wow, the engine does say castle, actually. I briefly mentioned this option, castling and letting him take the knight and taking back... I guess I probably would have taken with the knight, but I guess bishop takes makes a lot of sense too. Because I have this huge pawn mass in the center. And technically, black is not even down any material. I have three pawns for it. So the engine is just thrilled about this for black. It must really like my um, my pawn roller. I mean, I can play d4 and then c3 coming up very quickly. It might end up costing him a piece anyways down the road. So that's interesting. I think I played the most practical move, knight e4. Shedding a pawn, giving one pawn back, but making sure I had no development issues. Knight f8, okay. Yeah, knight f8 makes sense here too. I briefly considered that. Knight f8 is a good move because I could bring my knight to e6 and blockade. Blockade is e5 pawn, and I offer a queen trade in the process. And here I was speculating that maybe he should have tried e6. And I would have played knight f6, hitting his rook and hitting here. Check. If take, probably take with a rook. Check. Take, say rook takes. Yeah, and black is definitely better up the pawn, although it's it's not uh, it's not in a walk in the park. Instead, he played this bishop h3 move, yep, and that's an oversight due to knight takes e5. Yeah, and I thought maybe his better chance was to play queen e2, but Check. it seems like this is also not great for him. There's this pin issue in this line as well. And if bishop takes c8, I can calmly recapture with the queen, knowing that I can always get my material back if I want. And after after queen takes d8, I think Check. wasn't too difficult. I took with the bishop, allowing that move, but being able to take back. And he's down two pawns. His coordination is not good. He's not developed yet. Yep, this looks like it's this Check. phase was all fine. I gave the C pawn in order to get this fatal pin going. I like this move H5. A lot of people would be hurrying to play something here. I say a lot of people. Like a lot of players um, who are improving and uh, maybe aren't used to like being in uh, positions where they stand to win in a number of ways. Because the temptation is always to try to win in the most efficient way, right? So if you're black, you see that you have this pin on the, the bishop on c1, you're going to be like looking at bishop d2 immediately, probably, like everyone would. And it's a good move, as you can see, the computer thinks it's winning. But there's no rush. Like once you start looking at the position, you realize white can't move either of these. So maybe h5 is good, or like the computer's proposing an f-pawn move, because that opens some doors for me. Like now I can play the b3 move, because... As I was saying, if I play b3, he can take with his rook, and all of a sudden I can't win his bishop now because he mates me. Checkmate. So this is the, the time to play a useful move for black. I have complete control over the position. My uh, main idea to win material can be equally effective on the next move or even the move after that. So why rush? So h5, solve the back rank problem. Might as well dot your I's and cross your T's, right? And yeah, now bishop d2, and yeah, he 
he, he could resign at any point. I mean, I don't, I personally don't really see the point in playing out situations like this. And even with some of my lower rated players, Check. like I, I think it's, you have better things to do than play out completely lost positions. You're not going to learn anything. I mean, yeah, Check. you might get like a very fortunate stalemate at some point, but Check. It's, it's just, Check. it's Check. not necessary. You have better Check. things to do with your time. Checkmate. So, anyways, um, hope you guys enjoyed that game. And please feel free to leave me any feedback in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.